here in this room is a will. Are you afraid of dragons? No. In fact, if it weren't for sorcerers, there wouldn't be any dragons. Once the skies were dotted with them. Magnificent horned backs, leathern wings, soaring in their hot breath wind. Oh, I know this creature of yours. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Mystery Vault podcast. I'm your host RJ McCready and for this episode we're going to be talking about dragons. Uh, where do they come from? The origins. And I think generally if you if you mention the word or you say the word dragon someone will know what you're talking about. I think in all cultures, folklore, should we say religions everywhere around the world. I think if I got into a plane right now and I went to somewhere like India, and I said, Dragon, I think people might know what I'm talking about. Possibly, maybe not. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but yeah, let's, let's have a look at this then. So, um, to start with what I just said. You mentioned the word dragon. I think a lot of people are going to think in their head, um, scaly skin creature with a large wingspan. They usually have about four feet with claws. Sometimes they have horns. Uh, they're very large and they breathe fire, fire d- breathing dragons and then they come in different colours, usually red, blue, uh, yellow, whichever colour y- you want. I think your generally your, 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 your imagination can fly with this, but as, as I mentioned it is referred pretty much everywhere on flags. You've got the flag, flag of Wales with the red dragon. Uh, you've got children's literature, you've got poems, you've got music, um, you've got films, you've got, uh, say, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, uh, Dragonheart, Reign of Fire, that's a bit of an underrated movie. Um, you've got the old story of Beowulf that goes right back, that's one of the first, I think it's either a poem or a story. Uh, where Beowulf fights a dragon there. Uh, you've got King George and the dragon, which I'll get into. Um, so, we, we all talk about it, but what I'm going to do today, um, this is what I thought about, was so where did a dragon originate from? I mean, did these things actually exist? Is there somewhere in the world where dragons are flying around and we don't know about it? Hell, let's not get into the conspiracies now, but... Um, I'll give you a quick answer though. I don't think they do exist. Um, and again, I will I will go into that later. But let's talk about where uh, dragons were first mentioned. And they go back to four and a half thousand years in Mesop- Mesopotamia, which is now um, Iraq, Ku- Kuwait. So you had the Mesopotamians, um, one of the first ancient civ- civilizations. Very interesting culture. In fact, I could probably do an episode on them alone. But uh, when you look at their ancient statues, they're representing a gradient dragon-like creature. Um, although, having said that, generally it's really difficult to try and pinpoint well, you know, where the first dragon text came from. But having a look, and I'll be honest, I've had a quick look online, and generally it's sort of pointing towards Mesopotamia. The other place in the world is uh, going to Mongolia now. There is a ancient race of people called the Hokusham culture and archaeologists have actually found a jade symbol going back to those times which I believe that they, they worshipped and if you have a look at it it looks like a dragon, it looks like a snake-like um, creature so that kind of depicts what we... Um, see as a dragon today so yeah around about four and a half thousand years quite a long time um so before i move on let's just stick to that time four and a four four and a half thousand years ago so i always think there's got to be some sort of uh, building block here from for, for the origins um and i've heard a lot of people say well 
if there was dragons, how come we haven't found any skeletons? And that kind of says that there probably wasn't any dragons. But um, touching on the skeletons, so we do we did have dinosaurs millions of years ago. And I suppose when I think about a dragon, realistically, I'm thinking about a pterodactyl or pterodactyl. Just trying to get that right, um, which did look like what we we see as a dragon today. You know, it had a large wingspan. Uh, a long neck and a sort of beak. I don't think it breed fire, although we don't really know that. Um, but they weren't about at the same time as, as humans. But just throwing this one out, there is a theory, you know, it's just a theory of mine. What's to say that these ancient civilizations didn't come across dinosaur bones? Just putting that one out there is a little bit of a theory of mine, and they thought, well, what is that? And uh, could it have been some sort of ancient creature? And then they've put some sort of interpretation themselves. Or is it that there were, um, you know, like snakes back then and crocodiles. And then they were sort of interpreting them as something more than what they were, perhaps. Um, because there's another theory that scientists are saying that um, snakes back in those times were a little bit bigger than they are today. It's something to do with the oxygen or something. Yeah, there's more oxygen. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but if you're looking into it, they reckon that the um, reptiles were just a little bit bigger than they are today, so they might have been a little bit more terrifying. In fact, there is a snake. It was called the Titan Boa. I think it's extinct now, but it, it was found in um, Colombia, and it got up to 12.8 metres um, in length and weighed about 140. 1,335 kilograms, so that thing would be too terrifying. And then the other theory of mine here is, and I'm just chucking this one out there because it just gets you thinking, um, is it perhaps that the ancients were storytellers themselves, you know, like like we are today? You know, like we we tell stories today and we, we exaggerate things in the cinema because we've got technology that can create fantastic special effects. Um, and then we can create things that aren't real in, in cinema with stories and fantasy. And what's to say that the ancients just created a fantasy character for a story for, um, you know, maybe religious folklore purposes, maybe to scare children or something like that. Um, and then what's happened is, is that they've created it and tried to, you know, believed it enough and throughout the ages people have just added a little bit more to it and right up until t till now that is th the building block from from the ancients to what we've got in modern modern day perhaps just chucking that one in there um so yeah it's a, it does get you thinking um that's why i thought i'd talk about this uh topic today um because when you start thinking about it everywhere you look you think oh look there's a there's a dragon and um <laughs> it's, there's lots of different avenues that you can go down so there's a little bit of a building block so let's have a look at the interpretation of a dragon now what's interesting here is the the on the on the western side of the planet um the, the dragon is seen very differently to the east say in um southeast asia china japan um china chinese folklore sees a dragon without the wings um, I don't think it breathes fire. Oh, yeah, I think it does breathe fire. Um, but the dragon is seen upon as a symbol of uh, virtue. It's a symbol of luck. It's a very magical creature, and it's generally a good creature. And I think the the, the old wise men in China are referred to as as um, dragons for their uh, virtues and. I think um, healing powers, so if you say dragon in China, it's generally seen as a very sort of powerful symbol. Whereas in Western culture, on our side of the fence from where I am, uh, the, the dragon is seen as a menacing character. Um, let's, let's face it, it wants to try and kill you or it's protecting something, uh, like in the Lord of the Rings. You've got the, I think it's Smog. Um, he's... The dragon is in his cave protecting his money, his gold, and his valuables. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see how different there are different interpretations. There is also a interpretation in the Bible. Um, I didn't really dig into that too much, but there's a verse in the Bible that mentions the Leviathan, 
uh, which is a um, a sea creature. Um, so again, yeah, we that's been mentioned before. I think that's uh, uh, also mentioned in the sort of medieval culture of sea sea serpents. Um, then going on from there, you've got the Scandinavian, the Norse gods. Uh, there's also uh, a story of four with, with the the, the um, Norse god Thor fights a leviathan or a serpent type creature and then of course you have the symbol of the dragon um, fr from this story in Norse mythology which is very powerful hence the reason why they use the symbol of a dragon on the front of the Viking uh, longship so there you have it you also have it in um, South American culture I think there's a god called Kalkukan. Um I think I've got that right <laughs> Uh, this is a serpent type creature that um, I've seen this before. I've been to uh, Chichen Itza, and I think it's a certain time of the year with the eclipse you see the serpent creature um, go down the side of one of the pyramids. And, and they say that is the god Kalkugan because at the bottom of the pyramid you can see his face, which is like a serpent type. Uh, creature with a beard and what's interesting here this is kind of a bit a little bit of a segue but some people believe that the vikings got to this uh south america and they believe that kalkukan may have been a viking hence the reason why um they believe the kalkukan god to to have a beard and then to be like the snake-like creature because of the viking longship so it's a, it's a little bit of food for thought which uh kind of ties in nicely there with that and then of course um, in England which is where I'm from uh, we have St George and the dragon now I am very guilty of this where I don't really know I didn't really know an awful lot about this story so I'm just gonna go into a little bit of detail with this one um, so if you do or if you don't know this story I'm just gonna skim over this a little bit but the story goes back to the around about the 13th century, so it's around about the sort of time of the um, Crusades. You had knights in armour, um, castles, um, and generally, you know, as I said at the beginning of the episode, when you think about a dragon, you're thinking about castles and knights because of this story, because of George and the dragon. Um, so it's, when I looked at it, it kind of reminded me of the film Clash of the Titans, if anybody's seen that, where you actually have Perseus trying to save Andromeda um, from the Titan godlike sea creature in that story. So it's very similar to that. Um, so it was in a place called Cappadocia, the city of Silene, which is uh, modern day Libya today. And you had George, uh, he was a knight, he served for the Empire of Rome back then. I think he was in the uh, Crusades. And the story is that the, there was a serpent that turned up in the city and it needed to be appeased. And the king offered the dragon, first of all, sheep. And then it went on to local townsfolk. Then it went on to, I think it was like gold. And then the only thing that he was left to offer before the dragon would destroy the city was actually his daughter. Now, his daughter was um, tied up to a uh, spike to be offered to the dragon. And then this is when George turns up, the, the hero in this story. He, he rescues the king's daughter by slaying the, the dragon. And then, obviously, he becomes a hero in the town. So that's kind of like a basic story of... Uh, uh, St. George or George and the Dragon which is uh, the patron saint of, of England so if you've never heard of that story that's a bit of a brisk over um, to tell you what that's all about and I think that's from the uh, Golden Legend version of that story and then following on from that is another story which is um, a little shout out to my friend Nick Isaacs hello Nick, um, hope you're enjoying the show um I mentioned to him that I was doing dragons and he said, oh yeah, make sure you mention the lamp, Lampton Worm. I've never actually heard of this story, but um, yeah, I'll just have a quick skim over this. So this is based in the county of Durham, uh, North East England. And it's a local, local folk tale where you have uh, John Lampton, who's a knight. He fought in the Crusades, very much like um, St. George of those times. And 
the local legend says that there was a worm type creature in this town or city um, worm stroke dragon this was in the 14th century and John Lampton managed to slay the dragon and became, became a hero um, this is also the basis of a movie Nick you probably know this film The, the Lair of the White Worm which is actually uh, also a Stoker novel and the film came out in 1988 i think that's the one that stars hugh grant so i mean it's quite a good film actually so go and check it out so um again it's i'll be honest with you i can keep going on with this when i when i opened up this topic for this show i thought there's actually quite a lot to go into there's lots of strands lots of avenues you can go down as far back as trying to find the the origins which can't really sort of tie up and put your finger on and say, oh yeah, that's exactly where it's um, come from. But um, yeah, there's some of the uh, folk tales. I also need to mention that the uh, there was dragons in Greek mythology as well. Um, dragon is actually the word, which is a Greek word called drakon, which means huge serpent. So that's where so that's where the name dragon comes from. It's from the Greeks. So let's move on to, I've said, I put that card on the table at the beginning, I was saying you know, dragons don't exist. I don't think they do, not not the interpretation that you see in, in these folklore tales or movies with, you know, a huge fire-breathing dragon flying around. Although, I think if that was the case, it would be quite terrifying. I think we'd be in an awful lot of trouble uh, with that, if that was the case. Um, but there are actually... Uh, creatures out there you've got the komodo dragon and you've also got a this is an interesting um it's like a reptile flying creature called a draco volon it's about nine inches in length but he's actually like a little reptilian snake like creature or lizard with wings and he can actually fly so if there is such a thing as a dragon it'd be like a draco valon or volon v o L O N S. Put that into uh, Google and go and check that out. It's quite a cool looking dude, <laughs> shall we say. Um, so let's move on now to, uh, again, I, I know I said I don't think there are dragons. Let me tell you what I think with this whole thing in, in general. Um, first of all, I think that we as humans like to be scared by stuff. Um, I think the prospect of a, a dragon being real is quite exciting. Two people seeing it in cinema, um, they'd be quite fascinated by it. And I think generally, as like I say, as, as as a human race, we like to be scared by stuff because you know you look at um, dinosaurs. You know, one of the most terrifying dinosaurs is the coolest one, which is like the T-Rex. You know, people walking around with T-shirts and kids have got like a T-Rex and they love it. Um, and it goes the same with uh, stuff that does exist, I think, with sharks. You know, no one walks around with a T-shirt on with like a little bit of white bait or a sardine saying sardines are cool. I'm not saying they're not, but I'm just saying, just for example, people generally are going to go for that big great white shark um, I think what I'm trying to say here is is that anything that could possibly let's face it try and kill us or terrify us we generally find as being cool so I think that's where um, the prospect of a dragon is where it's terrifying anything that is terrifying kind of becomes quite cool in in that aspect. I don't know what you guys think, but that's just kind of how I, I how I see it. Um, and then, you know, saying whether a dragon, you know, saying it doesn't exist, but I suppose because we talk about it so much, it's in films and it's in folklore and it's in stories and in poems because um, it's mentioned so much, something can become real. So I guess dragons are real because we believe in them. Um, which is just, as I mentioned before, in the mystery world, it's uh, that's a, that's an interesting thought in itself, as uh, the power of our imaginations. 
uh, kind of runs wild, if you know what I mean. So I, I kind of find that interesting as well. Ever since I've been doing the mystery, um, you know, the Mystery Vault podcast, it's just that it always goes back to that. It's the power of our imagination. It goes into all the things, you know, whether. You know, there's a Loch Ness monster or Bigfoot or there's UFOs. I, f- I think it'd be a sad day if we didn't have that. And I think that's why people were very, very drawn towards the mystery world because it, it's kind of like a little bit of escapism from all the everyday sort of rubbish that you've got to deal with. You know what I mean? When you stick on the, <laughs> stick on the news and all that sort of depressing rubbish. Hang on a second, let's go and pick up a book about dragons. That's going to be so much more interesting. So I think that's going to be our fascination of that. And of course, and of course, um, I can't skip out the possibility of aliens. Dan Bone, if you're listening, you know that. I always chuck that one in there. <laughs> a little shout out to you there. Um, that has been brought up. Um, I watch um, some documentary TV shows about ancient aliens. I'm very interested in all that sort of stuff. Um, and they have said that one of the f- ancient astronaut theories is because they think that ancient cultures believe in dragons because they think that that is the ancients misinterpreting um, UFOs as uh, spaceships or vessels from another planet. And I suppose the exhaust fumes with the flames coming out uh, are mistaken as a creature with that was breathing fire. So that's generally the um, interpretation on that. So I thought I'd throw that one in there as well. So aliens have got something to do with this as well. They're always to blame. <laughs> so there you go. I've gone from ancient Mesopotamia to aliens. But I hope you enjoyed the episode, everybody. Um, hopefully... That's a quick 20 minute um, conversation about dragons, the origins, and if you didn't know anything about dragons, I mean, generally everybody does know about dragons, but um, hopefully that's helped answer a few few uh, questions in your mind as much as it has for for me. Um, so there you go. That's uh, I quite enjoyed that. I quite lo- enjoyed looking into that. But I have. This is kind of like a little bit, as I say, with if you're new to the show, this is a bit of a skim over. It gives you a little bit of a, use the word bite size, like I might have a show with cinema. Um, just give you a little taste for it. But um, if you're if you are you know more interested in it, do go and have a look on the internet. Um, there's a load. It's, it's just branch out into other avenues. It's quite an interesting topic. Um, obviously, I haven't mentioned the name. There's a lot of names of dragons in different sort of cultures and religions. I could probably do like a two-hour episode, but you don't want to talk, hear me talking for two hours. Twenty minutes is a, enough <laughs> for you from the RJ McCree. <laughs> um, but there you go. Um, hope you enjoyed that. I'll leave it at that. Um, so, what, what's coming up next? I don't know. I'm, I, as I said, I always make this up as I go along. I'm walking down the street and I'll just go boom. Oh yeah. Let's talk about that. So, um, I will surprise you. I will think of something else uh, to talk about. Something spooky or weird and mysterious. Um, But there you go, guys. I will end it on that. Um, Hope you enjoyed the episode. Let's do a little bit of admin for the show. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. So, please go and check out all the other shows on there. Including my other uh, podcast, which is Bite Size Cinema Podcast. I've got a few episodes coming out soon. Uh, Bridge Too Far, an old war movie. I've got uh, Matt Wood, a uh, fellow podcaster, joining me for that episode. And then uh, this weekend, I've got Colt Sipes from Cinema Sipes. Hello, Colt. I know you listen to the show. Um, he will be joining me for Clue because I know he loves that movie and so do I. So we'll go a whole ton of fun on that. So if you want to go and check those shows out. Um... Another little bit of admin, I am on Facebook, that's the best place to find me if you want to contact me or say anything about the show. Tell me what I did, what I've missed out on this episode. (laughs) I'm open to it all. Um, And you can also, more importantly, listen to the show. I'm on Spotify, it's on YouTube, it's on iTunes and several other players uh, if you type in... The Mystery Vault podcast into Google. It will take you somewhere where you can listen to the show and listen listen to me talking about mystery stuff. Um, so yeah, there you go. Um, as always, keep it spooky, keep it safe, and I'll Sitting see you soon.
If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.